Hello everyone and welcome back to The Little Quilter. Today we are getting started on this quilt right here, so the Harry Potter quilt, and I just wanted to give you guys kind of a heads up of how I got everything sort of set up because as you can see here, I have got the pantograph loaded onto the back of the quilt and that did take a little bit of doing to get that done. So just to kind of go over what I did and I'll put in some of the video that I did because whenever I was doing this last night, I was just really focused on getting everything set up. So I had to first clear off the table and then I was able to go ahead and put the plastic vinyl down from Urban Elements. And that's gonna be the grid that sort of holds down the pantograph on the quilt. And so once I had that down, I did have to cut off about two inches from the Urban Elements vinyl grid. It just was too long. And I actually got the smallest one. So it was for a 12 inch table, if I remember correctly. And um, my table is just not that long, which my throat space for the King Quilter 2 is only 18 inches. So based on what I've done research on and looked at everything kind of as I've progressed to this pantograph point in my quilting uh, journey, I have found that you basically need about six inches less than what your quilting machine's throat space is. So it makes sense why I don't need like an 18 or 24 inch uh, vinyl covering because the throat space of this machine is just not gonna cover it. So I guess that also means that if I were ever to upgrade my machine, I would probably want to get a bigger table as well. So never really thought about that. That's kind of beside the point. So the other thing is once I had the vinyl down, so once I had the vinyl down, I had to put the rear handlebars and the laser light on the machine because I had, as of yet, well actually my machine got shipped without the rear hander, the rear hand, so actually my machine got shipped without the rear handlebars and it took several months before they finally came in and those finally came in and then I didn't really have a reason for them. I was also a little bit concerned about putting them on the back just because of where my table sits against this wall. I didn't want to, I didn't want to lose some of that space that I had and it actually is okay. So if you see here, these actually don't stick out that that far and I haven't had any big issues. Now I have had my table pushed out away from the wall so that I can comfortably stand back here because this is where I'm gonna be quilting that pantograph. Okay, so back to the pantograph. Once I had that vinyl onto the quilting platform here, I went ahead and put down my pantograph here and I'm doing the black magic pantograph and I was actually pretty surprised when I opened it because it's 11.75 inches long so it's pretty close to me not being able to do this pantograph without having them scale it down and when I purchased the pantograph I just wasn't really I didn't really understand it so I'm lucky with that respect, or so I think I'm gonna be lucky. And this isn't a huge quilt, so I think I'm gonna be okay. If this was the red sampler quilt, I would be in, in big trouble. I would have to just order another pantograph to be printed um, to have it done. Okay, and then as for setting this part up, just to kind of go over it a little bit. So I'll link below, so I will link below 
the video that I watched to set this up, and it seemed one of the more concise videos with a lot of information, a few pointers that I would add to that video, um, which I think I will improve on as I go, is so I set up this pantograph quilt right here, and basically my laser light, so when you do your machine, you wanna make sure that when you find your corner, so, oh, I just messed it up. So when you find your corner light, that is the same corner as up here, right? So if this, do you see that? If this is my corner, let me go ahead and put my needle down. Okay, so that is my needle down in the corner up here. When we look at the laser light, we want it to we want it to be on the corner right here. And that is the so that is the one thing so far that I've not liked is I feel like the clamps for this laser are not great and it will be very easy for me to hit. So I'm a little bit concerned about that because, you know, I'm, I'm probably gonna hit it. So we'll have to see how that works and I might have to look and see if there's a better clamp that I can purchase to put this laser light on because if it moves, then this whole measuring thing is just a moot point in all honesty. But the main thing you wanted to make sure is that you have your wheels all the way back but this is all the way back in that right hand corner. And the main reason for that is because as you progress through this quilt, especially if you have a big pantograph like this, if your, your wheels are not all the way back and you go to go forward, you're gonna run out of space and you're gonna hit this bar before you finish your pantograph. So that was one thing that I didn't actually understand and thankfully, after I had it, what I thought was all set up, I just thought, well, I'm just gonna like move the quilt around just to get like the feel of moving it on the back of the table and following with the line without even quilting anything. And thank goodness I did because I realized, oh, this is not gonna work because I only got to, I think I got to like here and I hit the bar. And so there's all of this left to quilt. So I have also already stitched around the borders of the quilt. So I am ready to actually start doing this pantograph. I'm going to be using Glide Thread. You guys know I love my Glide Thread. And this is cream color, and it's gonna be cream in the bobbin as well with the Magna Glides. So I think that that is all of the information. If you like this pantograph, I will link it down below. It's from Urban Elements, and I will also link the cream color and then if you want to check out the video of me making this quilt um maybe i'll put that in like a little card box thing up here or at least down below and um without further ado let's see what happens when i do pantograph quilting i am a little bit nervous one other thing i wanted to show you guys is that i have changed out my foot which was super weird and i just have this glide foot on and so the nice part about the glide foot is that it literally glides over the edges so it's not going to catch anything and pull it up since i'm not going to be able to really see where i'm quilting if i go off the edge i'm not going to pull any of this up it's just going to glide across it so i do think this is a foot that you need um, and then, like I said, I've just basted everything down here. And so I've just come up here, set my stitches, I'm ready to go and start quilting.
So just a quick thing to show you towards the end what I did. So I had my um, lineup of the edge of my quilt, but at the end I basically marked off the edge of the quilt and basically went through and quilted to here, came back up and moved along that line in order to finish that last little lip of a quilt that I had. Probably didn't have to do that one, but I just wanted to be thorough. Okay, everybody, I finished it. It got a little dicey there at the end. So that last line was a little bit dicey. I definitely will probably not be doing anything that is that large of a pantograph again. Um, thankfully, this was a smaller quilt. If this had been any bigger, I would have been in trouble because it would not have fit. It was just those last little edges of the broom that didn't quite um, reach to the edge and that's okay. Now it's definitely not perfect but it looks pretty cool and so I'm gonna look and see how many stitches it definitely I guess because it was such a larger fabric did not take me it only took me three bobbins. I went through three glide bobbins. I was prepared for so much more um, but I guess because of the size and also the size of the pantograph, it really just did not take that long at all. So let's look and see how long. I haven't checked. Okay, we're going to go up here and push that button maybe to work. Is this is the button. Okay, let's hit that button. So quilting this pantograph took me two hours and five minutes and 32 seconds. And it was only 98,686 stitches. So pretty darn fast. So yeah, that's pretty darn fast. I'm really excited um, to have gotten this done that fast. I'm gonna have to look and see because my next quilt I was gonna do was gonna be another pantograph. I know I do love doing my custom quilting and I have plans for sure, but the next quilt is gonna be the Christmas, the reindeer quilt. And again, that quilt is gonna be going to family members. So, um, and I also just really saw, so last Christmas I saw the pantograph that I'm gonna use and just thought it was super cute and really wanted to use it. And so I'm finally getting to use it on a quilt. All right, so that is it. I feel so productive, two quilts in that short of period. Who am I? I feel super productive, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. First pantograph, if you guys have any questions or if you want me to go more in depth on any particular part on setting up a pantograph, um, please comment down below and let me know because I'm gonna be doing another one. And um, if you guys don't have any major questions, I'll probably just do like a really short video on it, similar to this one, um, but without more of the sort of setup details. But if you like that, then let me know and I can certainly include that. And as always, I hope that you guys have a wonderful day and we'll see you next time.